he would have by now put forward a plan to reform Medicare and Social Security because he pointed out they're on the road to bankruptcy. He would reform them. He'd get that done. He hasn't even made a proposal. Um, and then, of course, Obama is trying to preserve Medicare as what it is, which is a, something that guarantees essential health care to older Americans, which we should have for everybody. But anyway, at least for older Americans, essential health care is a right. Republicans are saying, well, actually, we'll give you a voucher, and you can go off and deal with the insurance company. It's your problem. In terms of the... Um Again, the political allegations back and forth here. One person, one man's cost savings measures or another person's dastardly cuts. In well, terms of the substance of what President Obama is proposing, do you think there's anything wrong with it? No. I mean, if you actually look at it, the, the, the cost saving measures are not, no benefits are cut. Benefits are actually expanded. They're all reductions in payments to insurance companies and to hospitals. Mm -hmm. On the insurance company side, it's reducing the overpayments. There's a program called Medicare Advantage, which has turned out to, to be a huge boondoggle very small benefits uh, in return for a lot of additional taxpayer costs. So they're just going to say, this, we're going to stop subsidizing that. It has to compete on a level playing field. And then the hospitals would be paid less, but they have agreed to that. The, the hospital industry said, you know, we're going to have more patients because people will have insurance. We'll have fewer uninsured people who have to be treated without being able to pay their bills. So we're willing to accept slightly lower rates. So this was all a perfectly reasonable way to save what is actually a fairly modest amount of non money over the past next 10 years. Amazing that this has become well. You know, it's it's because uh, it's because Republicans are so good at making people think that they're going to take away your money and give it to those people. Mm -hmm. Because if you looked at it on its own merits, it's a totally reasonable set of modest cost reduction measures. And it, and and they're winning on the politics because what we're talking about is what President Obama did on Medicare as part of health reform, and we're not talking about the Paul Ryan proposal to voucherize it. That's right. Uh, yeah, and I, but I don't know if, if that lasts. I mean, we'll yeah. see how. But in, in any case, the, the amazing thing, that, that statement, we are going to keep the promise of Medicare. The promise of Medicare is that if you have a medical emergency, if you have a necessary treatment, it will be paid for. And that promise is explicitly taken away. The promise instead is we will give you some money that maybe will help you to buy an insurance policy from a private insurance company. That is not the promise of Medicare. In terms of the economics of a voucher proposal like that, I mean, in human terms, it is very hard to imagine. Right. I, mean, I mean, I imagine myself, let's say I'm, I imagine myself 88 years old, and I'm going to get a coupon and go shop on the private market right, for insurance because I've, I've got a discount coupon, and so then maybe somebody will want to pick me up as an 88-year-old pensioner to right. get private insurance. It's hard to imagine on human terms, but on, in economics terms, is there any reason to believe that putting people into the private market with some sort of government subsidy like that would be more efficient and bring down costs? In, the, in a big sense. This is an amazing thing because this is a case where conservatives, and not just the extreme ones, but especially the extremes, just won't take no for an answer. We have lots of evidence. We have lots of head-to-head -head comparisons of private insurance versus government programs. And the private insurance always ends up being more expensive. You can see that we've got Medicare Advantage, which is running Medicare through private insurance companies. It's turned out to be a money-losing proposition for the taxpayer. We have Medicaid versus private insurance. You, there, you have a lot of head-to-head -head comparisons. Medicaid is a lot cheaper. And, of course, there's the international thing. Every other advanced country relies much more on government provision of health insurance than we do. And every other advanced country has much cheaper health care than we do, uh, with no difference in quality or, in some cases, better quality. So, you know, you look at... And it's not like you have to go to Timbuktu to find this out, right? You know, go, go a couple hundred miles north to Canada, and you find out that over the last 40 years, Canada has had much lower growth in health care costs. They spend not much more than half as much per person as we do. Same health care outcomes as we have socialized, you know, socialized health insurance. What more do you need? Yeah, this is, this is it, it works country to country. It works comparing two different systems within the same country. It even works comparing the private part of Medicare That's right. to the public part. There, of is, not one, public there part. is not one example that, you, that I'm aware of uh, that, that shows what Republicans insist we should be the belief on which we completely overhaul our, our Medicare system. The Democrats will have done their job next week if what we are talking about with regard to Medicare right. is with the voucher idea of Paul Ryan's. Uh, but Paul Krugman, New York Times columnist, Nobel Prize winning economist, uh, and contributor to the new paperback version of the Occupy Handbook. Thanks, Paul. It's nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank you.